Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilán, and in this video, we are going to learn how to make a login system in SP.NET Core 8 with only two lines of code. This is a new feature for web APIs in SP.NET Core. So let's get started. First, what I want to do is to create a new project. It's going to be an SP.NET Core web API project. I'll click on next. I'll call it login into lines. Next, I will use .NET 8 preview because right now it is a preview version and I will use minimal APIs, although this will also work with controllers, but I'll just use minimal APIs. So let's click on create. Now I need to install some NuGet packages, so I will go to the solution explorer, right click on our project, manage NuGet packages, I'll go to browse, and I will install three packages. Let's install first Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server package, so that we can use SQL Server, I will use I will use Entity Framework Core 8 Preview 6, which is the latest version. As of now, I'll click on Install, Accept. Because I'm using Visual Studio, I want to install the Tools Package so that I can use the Entity Framework Core commands on the Package Manager console. So, Install, Accept. And finally, I want to install the Identity Entity Framework Core Package. Click on here, Install, and Accept. Alright, we're good to go from here. Now, I need to go to the csproj file because right now the application is not working with this environment globalization active. So I will just remove this from here and so we will not have any errors. Now let me create a new class which is going to be the application db context. Application db context. Let's inherit from identity db context control dot to import this namespace control dot again. Now to generate this constructor, now we can go to the program class to configure Entity Framework Core. This is just the setup for our application. So builder services at DB contest, we're going to see the login system in two lines of code in just a minute. So application DB context, options, options, use SQL server, name, default connection semicolon here, let me put this in another line so that you can visualize everything better. Now let me copy this name, let's go to the app settings.development.json file and let's say here connection strings, default connection and then server.database, let me write database correctly, login into lines, integrated security equal to true and trust server certificate equal to true also all right so now we can go to the package manager console and say add migration initial and let's see that we will create the identity tables now let's go to the package manager console update database and with this we're creating our database now let's create the login system in two lines of code so first we have to go to the program class and go to the part in which we are configuring the services, here is fine. And let me say builder services at identity API endpoints, identity user, which is the class that represents an user in our application, and then at entity framework stores, application db context, application db context, and that's it here. Now the second line of code is here, we can put it here. And we can say app map group identity map identity api identity user and believe it or not we have just configured a login system with only two lines of code let's test it so in order to test it i want to do the following i want to be able to use authorization here so that we can only use this endpoint if we are logged in in our application and in order for us to use authorization logic we have to come back here and configure that so builder services at authorization and that's it with this we're good to go control f5 to run our application let's go to swagger and let's see that if we try to use this weather forecast endpoint we're going to get back a 401 now let's see that as part as our configuration we have register login and refresh register for registering a new user login for login and refresh for refreshing the JSON web token. So let's see that if we go to register, we can put a username and password. So let me say here Felipe, and then let me say here this, 
as my password. And before I click on execute, let's just see that here in SQL Server, we can refresh and we can see that we have our database logging into lines, tables, and let's see that in users, right now we don't have anything, we don't have any records, it is empty. Now, if I come back here and I click on execute, we're going to see that after a few seconds, we're going to get back a response, a 200 OK, and if we come back here, we can click on F5 one more time, and now we have Felipe here. So as you can see, we definitely registered a new user. Now let's come back here, because now I want to get a hold of a JSON web token. For that, we have to log in. So let's go to login, try it out, and we can come here. We could use cookies if we want to, but I want to use cookies. I want to use a JSON web token. So let me come here, and when I say use a JSON web token, I mean I want to receive a JSON web token from this endpoint. Let me put here Felipe and the password, execute, and we're going to get token type better, access token, the access token, expires in one hour, and the refresh token. I have to use the access token in order to be able to access this weather forecast endpoint that we have here. And if I want to refresh the token, we can use this refresh token that we have here. We're going to see an example of that in a moment. First, we're going to make a test with this access token. So what I want to do is that I want to copy this. Let me copy this and let's come to Notepad because it is easier for me to copy it from here. Now, let me come here. Let me copy this. I want to use Postman for this test. I can send JSON Web Token through Swagger, but just to save some time, I'm going to use Postman. So let's come to Postman. Here we have a get request. Let me paste the URL. You can see that again, we got back a, we got back a 405 because we made a mistake. This shouldn't have been the identity logging endpoint, but this one, the weather forecast endpoint. So let me just fix that right away. Send. Okay. 401. Now let's come back to here. Let me get the access token copy and let's come to authorization, better token. And here we paste the token, send, and we get back a 200 OK. So as you can see, it works. Now, what if we want to refresh the token? Well, for that, we can use the refresh token that we got when we log in. So let me copy this and let's come back to Swagger. We can do this from Swagger. Refresh, try it out. Let me paste here the refresh token, execute, and we're going to get back again an access token and a refresh token. I can copy this from here and come back to Postman and I can replace this with the new access token and now I can press send and as you can see we have back a 200 OK. If you want to learn more about SP.NET Core, buy my Udemy course today. I have courses on SP.NET Core and React, SP.NET Core and Angular and also I have a C Sharp course that goes from zero to expert. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.